Hey everyone, Veronica Bariga here at WonderCon 2016. As you guys can see, the energy is buzzing, the cosplay is kicking ass, and me? Well, I'm just taking this all in for the very first time. Extraordinaire. Tell us um, about some of the novels and series that you have created. I know there's about three that you started with. Yeah, so uh, I have three different series that I do. Deadweight is my near future dark urban fantasy war thriller about the United States at war with the fairy of Irish mythology. Uh, it's been called Quentin Tarantino meets Apocalypse Now on Peyote. Very much my adult fantasy series. For teens and up, I have uh, my Tears of Rage books, which has been called Game of Thrones meets The Three Musketeers, because I like swashbuckling adventure with guns with my magical battles and, and dark political fantasy. And then for my all ages readers, I have the Halloween Jack series, which is the continuation of my favorite Irish legend about Halloween with a steampunk upgrade. I wrote those for my kids a couple of years ago. I'd write a chapter, I'd read it to them, and they helped me fix the boring and lame parts. <laughs> So you sort of cover all grounds. What would you yeah. say is your favorite thing to write about? I know you're sort of oh, gee. like to um, cover all bases, but there's got to be that something something that drives you when you go and create. Really the thing is, is I've got this story in my head that I want to share with other people. Yeah. And I say, sometimes I'm like, no, that's gonna, that one's just for me. There's stories that will never see the light of day. But then it's like, oh. This is something other people have to experience, and so those are the those are the things that I really like putting out into the world. Um, if you had to pick Halloween Jack and the Devil's Gate, the first Halloween Jack book, available now. <laughs> um, Where can people find this? Actually, uh, you can find this uh, on any online retailer at my website, mtodgalloglass.com, in ebook or this old-fashioned paper technology. Um, that's the fastest thing I ever wrote, yeah. and probably the most fun I had writing anything ever. It just it spoke to me. I was having a great time doing it with my kids, um, writing it and reading it and everything. Yeah. Uh, the one that I'm probably the proudest of because it, it and probably my best work sure. because it's the most recent are the 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 current installments of Deadweight. Take a look, people. Take a look. Um, yeah. Um, right now, when I write something else. So this is interesting. Let me ask you a question. Sure. Um, so, as a writer, do you sort of sit down with your, you know, giant cup of coffee and the sun beaming in your eyes and say, I'm going to do a story that satisfies what I want to tell? Or do you take note and sort of figure out what the market is? I mean, every writer is different, yeah. but what's your approach? I don't give a crap about the market. <laughs> um, um, well, I like that. Yeah, You're I don't. Yeah. I, I do not give a crap about the market Good. because um, the I th there are there are writers that do, and they say, "Oh, this is really popular. Sure. I'm going to write this thing like this." I have a I have a friend who goes, "Oh," and, and he wrote his very first book. Book was where he took Jurassic Park <laughs> and he changed the setting and he yeah. goes, "I'm writing this book. Oh, on this page, the first monster it's like shows a up. In I'm going to write a formula, yeah. right? Kind of." And he did yeah. that. I am so not interested in telling stories like that. Yeah. I want to tell the stories that I like, uh, that I'm interested in telling, that are exciting to me. And I may not have as broad a readership yet, but the readers that I have really, really love the stories that I tell because. I'm not telling something that's formulaic or that anybody else You're has done before. You're bringing something new and fresh to the table. That's my goal. Yeah. Um, but I don't have sunlight 
in my eyes because most of my composition happens at night after everybody goes That's to bed. That's stereotype of I the know. writer. You wake up at 10 a.m. and I used no. to write so it's so, just like, yeah. you know, I wake up late, I have my cup of coffee and, you know, my morning is noon and it's just like, <laughs> oh God, and here we go. No, I, I, I until 8 p.m. My yeah. daytimes are filled with my three-year-old daughter. Oh, that's very nice. Because right, I'm the stay-at-home dad. Oh, that's awesome. So what, okay, so when you were a kid, uh, what were you into? Who inspired you? What what comic books or, uh, you know, series did you grow up uh, Well, with? I was, I grew up a Marvel guy. Um, Marvel? Hey. I, I grew up a Marvel guy. <laughs> uh, Batman was awesome because it's yeah. Batman, but yeah. mostly I was a Marvel guy. Um, when I was in second grade, which was a long time ago, uh, I read the Chronicles of Narnia in third and fourth grade. I got introduced to Lord of the Rings, and I was just like, I want to write stories like this. And those back when Lord of the Rings and Chronicles of Narnia were the two fantasy series. I mean, there were others, but those were the ones that were mainstream. Yeah. I grew up in, in the era when geeks and nerds still got put into lockers, um, and I didn't care because I was doing. I I loved what I was doing, and. Yeah. So. You know what's so cool about, this is my first time here, but okay. I really appreciate how mainstream this culture has gotten and it's bringing in outside perspectives yeah. and it's sort of bridging all these different gaps. I see Disney, I see, uh, you know, independent um, mm -hmm. uh, writers and filmmakers, and I see uh, video games, and it's, it's, it's really nice to see it, all these worlds come together. Well, and the, the coolest thing about it is, is now that somebody who has an idea like me, Yeah. Uh, they can do a thing and they can put their passion into it and their love into it and and like they're um, you can find like-minded right, people but also you can put it out into the yeah. world and the people that were, are looking for it and you can find people that love it and then when you get a big enough of an audience yeah. you can find the other the like the big publishers and stuff and go oh people are excited about this we want to take this from being the indie thing and make it more mainstream and so build your brand. So what would be your biggest dream in the world? That somebody creates a film, like a Hollywood blockbuster? Because <laughs> 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 we were talking about this. All right, so my Let's biggest see. dream, my biggest, so, nerdiest, yeah. geekiest, bucket list, crack dream would be to perform my storytelling show in Hall H. So, San Diego Comic Con. Get it going! I would, I want to do my, I want to do, I want, it's Comic Con International, a San Diego Comic Con, whatever you want to call it, I want to do my storytelling show in Hall H, be, and then I could die a happy, happy man, because I'd done that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank oh, you. Oh, this was much. awesome. Yeah.